Welcome back to another edition of America vs. Europe here at CinemaDailyUS.com. I'm Abe Freetanzer here in Los Angeles, United States. And I'm Chiara Spagnoli Gabardi in Milan, in Italy. Wonderful. And today we're talking about Maestro from Bradley Cooper. Can you tell me, Chiara, what did you think of this film overall? I was absolutely blown away by the visuals, by the performances, and I must say by this fantastic relationship that blossoms on screen between Leonard Bernstein and Felicia Montalegre. And I feel that accuracy is not the key to the film here because uh, something that the film misses is how they they had an initial engagement that was broken off. She then had a relationship for uh, um, a few other years with another uh, with a with an actor, and only when the art to pass away that they rekindle and then have this amazing and intense relationship that uh, that we see but i also found the figure of the woman the, the 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 intensity of the woman she represented that yet again had to play the role of her era you know with this hush hush approach towards the affairs of the husband some called it a love marriage and other than that, it's just amazing to see Bradley Cooper impersonating and, you know, uh, embodying all the vigor and charisma of Leonard Bernstein. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for a lot of biopics, there has to be some sort of structure where you you take certain pieces of the life and not everything is entirely accurate. And I think what they took out really did work very well. I think the visuals, especially the way they use black and white uh, for earlier on when things are very rosy and then it's color when things aren't quite so nice later. And I think that just, it works so well. And we've seen Bradley Cooper, he's a multiple Oscar nominee, but he's never done anything like this before. This is really, really phenomenal. And Carrie Mulligan has some really standout Oscar clips, uh, but she's also just so good. And the two of them together have an electricity that is absolutely fantastic. And I, I just was was very blown away by that. I also think that Bradley Cooper, I mean, A Star is Born is a great debut, but this is a whole nother level. This is something that's a, that's a standard film. It's very well done. This is something absolutely knocking it out of the park. Absolutely. And you can uh, actually feel his love and knowledge of film and the history of film and also the arts. I mean, when they have when the two of them have an argument at a certain point, I just saw a painting by Edward Hopper. And then there's a wonderful, wonderful scene that everyone has loved of uh, the silhouette of uh, Bernstein conducting and at a distance, the wife on stage. And then when he enters the theatrical choreography of his On the Town and, um, and the way he blends the entire music to the narrative. It's like another co-star of the film. So I was utterly overwhelmed. I'm glad that Netflix, at least in the US, I don't know about in Italy, is giving yeah. more time in theaters before it comes to Netflix. Because as I say with every Netflix film, I've said this before, go see it in the theater. Almost all of these great Netflix entries are actually much better on a big screen. And I think just the, the, the experience of being drawn in and certainly the music also, I hope your TV speakers are great. But I mean, if you're in the theater, you're really going to have a very fantastic time uh, time with this. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it has great Oscar potential in all fields. Best film director, our actors, but not for the music score, which is quite a shame because, of course, the, the music is not original. But um, it's such a wonderful experience. In a, in a screening room of a movie theater. And fortunately, we can see it once more on Netflix when it comes. I do hope that history doesn't repeat itself and Bradley Cooper is nominated for best director this time because he's in for best actor. I'm not concerned about that, but the idea that he might get snubbed again for best director, he really just, he does such a great job and has such a control over the material that you can see. And it's such a passion project. And that's nice because again, he's done so much stuff. He's in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 this year, another film that is nowhere near as good, um, but it's just great to see what he's doing here and how he's He's owning and anchoring the material. Absolutely. So what would you say is your final grade, Kiara? Oh, A star for me. I'll go with an A minus, but as people who follow my reviews regularly know, that's that's very high. So I'm, I'm, I will highly recommend this one. Okay. Thank you, Abe. Thank you, Kiara. That's uh, it for this edition of America vs. Europe. <laughs>